In this tutorial series, we will create an inventory from scratch for your 3D first-person Godot game. We will walk through creating the user interface as well as designing the behind-the-scenes structures to hold item data. We will interact with objects in the world and place them in our inventory. This includes pickups that affect the player's stats like raising their health or draining their sanity, keys that can be used to unlock doors, as well as notes that hold information that the player might want to reference later. We will also be able to remove these items from our inventory, spawning them back into the world, and this whole system will be designed to be easy to understand easy to implement, and easy to modify for your game. If you like this content, feel free to subscribe and join my Discord server, where I also offer help to those learning from these tutorials. The code for the finished inventory is available on my GitHub page, completely 110% free, so if you're not actually interested in learning the system, then by all means, just go right there and get it. And we will be building off the immersive first-person controller I built in my other series, but this inventory system should work with any first-person controller that you have. In this episode, we will go over the basics of setting up a user interface in Godot using control nodes, as well as getting the basic image to appear on the screen when we press a button. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to the channel Bonkahe. Bone Kahi, who made a bunch of great videos on Godot stuff, including a few on an inventory system that were a great basis for the one that we will be writing in this series. <laughs> All right, so the goal for this video is to get an inventory panel appearing on the screen when the player presses the tab button. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bind the tab button to our inventory. So we're gonna do that by going to project, project settings, go into your input map, go to add new action and just type in inventory. Find where your inventory option is, hit the plus sign and type in the tab key. We'll hit okay and go ahead and close out of that. Now, of course you don't have to have followed along with all the other tutorials for this to work. However, I am going to show you at some point how we are going to hook up collecting items, using them, picking up keys, using them on doors, grabbing notes and reopening them, things like that. But if you have your own system set up, it's gonna be very simple for you to link it up, I promise. But before we can do any of that, the first thing we have to do is to get an inventory to appear to the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And the reason I preface that with what I have just said is because currently I have a fairly complex player character set up. We have an interaction controller and a sanity controller. The interaction controller handles us picking up objects, so that way I can see this battery, I can pick it up, and I can throw it. And the sanity controller handles how the player is working in dark environments. As you can see in the top left, my sanity is draining rapidly, and eventually the screen will start to warp, and I'm not looking too good. If you do want to get to this point, go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. I will leave links in the description below. But the way I did this is I created their own individual scenes with their own individual scripts and we're gonna do the exact same method with our inventory. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and click this plus sign up here. We're gonna create another node, and we're gonna go ahead and create a regular node. Let's go ahead and rename that, and this is now our inventory controller. Let's go ahead and hit save, and we're gonna save this in the player folder, so inventory controller.scene is just fine. And so obviously our inventory is going to be a 2D user interface for the player. So let's go ahead and look at our 2D view. So as you can see, there is this rectangle here. It should be 1920 by 1080 pixels because that is what our game is going to be running at. And this just represents the viewport or what the player sees when they're playing the game. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to hit Control A. We are going to add a canvas layer. We don't need to do anything to those settings, but what we do need to add is a control node. Now this control node here is essentially going to be our parent. So let's go ahead and rename this, and this is going to be our inventory UI. So it's a little strange how it's just this small little box in the top left-hand corner of our screen. We want the inventory to kind of take up the whole screen, and we can kind of design where the panel will go within that. So the way you do that is you go into layout, you go into your anchors preset and you set this to full rect. So obviously now everything that is under our inventory UI, all of, all of the things we are going to make in this video, are going to be within the viewport. Obviously you do not want your UI to not be seen by your player and have it you know, somewhere off here. Regardless, we actually need some graphics, so we're gonna go ahead and click on our inventory UI, we're gonna hit Control A, and we're going to add a panel. A panel is literally just as it sounds. It's going to be a little 2D box. 
And of course our little 2D box is going to have a custom minimum size of 100 by 100. That's just so we can see it right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did with our control node. So we need to make sure our layout mode is set to anchors. However, instead of setting it to full rect because we don't want the inventory to take up the whole screen, we're simply gonna put it in the center of the screen. Now, how big you want your inventory to be is dependent on you and your game. I know that my inventory is going to be 20 inventory slots. They are going to be in a four row by five column grid. And based on the size, I know that that's going to be 360 pixels and it's going to be 285 pixels. Uh, tall. Now you'll see that because of the way this is set up, it's not actually in the center of our screen. So we're just going to adjust the position slightly. We're going to set the position to 780 uh, in the X and we're going to set it to 400 in the Y. And we're not going to design this inventory because obviously your inventory should match the art style of your game. However, if I go into my theme overrides and go into style, I can find the style box flat. And this is how you would design your inventory should you choose to do so. I'm gonna right click and say make unique. And I'm just gonna change the background color to have a little bit more blue, I think. We're gonna change the corner detail to eight. This makes the corners around it uh, a little more rounded. We're gonna go back and look at our border width and we want to set this to be two pixels across the board. We also wanna to go to our border. We wanna turn the border on and you'll see that gave us a little white outline there. And we're just gonna take this color and we're going to set this to zero alpha. And so that way the, that way the panel kind of looks like it blends out a little bit. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and kind of set up the underlying mechanisms for how we're going to be adding our inventory slots. So click on our panel, we're gonna go ahead and hit control A. We're gonna add a margin container. And so as it says, a margin container keeps a margin around its child controls. This is going to help prevent our inventory slots from overlapping on one another. So our margin container, we want it to take up the whole uh, entire panel that we have designed. However, you don't just wanna stretch it because if you end up resizing the UI in the future, you want the margin to stick with it. And the way you do that is you change the layout mode back to anchors and you're gonna set this to full rect. And you'll notice that it only takes up the panel and not the whole screen. That's on purpose. So the margin container can obviously never be bigger than its parent panel. And we're just gonna go down into the theme overrides and we're going to set some margins. I'm gonna set it to five pixels on all sides so that way there's plenty of gap between the margin container and the panel itself. So now that we have our margin set up, we need to set up our grid. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Control A on our margin container and we are going to add a grid container. Obviously a grid container arranges, arranges the children in a grid layout. I know, riveting stuff. So like I said, we're going to be doing a five column by four row grid. We only need to specify the columns here. The size of the inventory itself will handle the rows. And the only other thing we need to do here is go into the layout container sizing and set the horizontal to uh, shrink center. And this is just so if I have 20, it's a nice even square number. If I decide to have 18, it just means the three boxes will be in the center of the inventory instead of off to the left. And there we go. There is our inventory controller, quote unquote, designed. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go into our player and just find where you created that scene, the inventory controller, and drag it onto your player. And I'm going to move it right next to my other controllers like that. I'm gonna right click and access it as a unique name. So let me go ahead and save. And if we run the game, you'll now see that we have this panel and it is permanently on our screen. We need to set it up so that way by default, the panel is off. And then when we press the tab button, it comes onto the screen. So we're gonna go into our player script here and I know exactly where we are handling our movement of the camera, which is here in our input. So here we have our lean and then we have our uh, input mouse motion. So if the inventory is up, the player is going to want to be shown the cursor and they're gonna to want to click on things. And so we don't want the player's head movement to move with the mouse anymore. So we need to do two things. We need to make sure the mouse is visible and we need to lock the camera so that way it is no longer moving. So input event mouse motion, excuse me, we're going to check if input dot is action pressed. And if that action is the inventory button, which in our case is tab, 
then we want to do a few things. The first thing we want to do is we want to set the inventory controller dot visible equal to true, which does remind me we need to go into our inventory controller, go to where our UI is and go down to visibility and turn that off. So by default, the inventory does not show unless the player is pressing the button. So we don't have a reference to our inventory controller. So if we go back to our player, this is why we access it as a unique name. I'm just going to drag it in right here and right above the sanity vars, I'm going to create the inventory vars, assuming I can spell. All right, so then back down in our input, we have a few more things we need to do. We need to set the mouse mode from being captured in the game to being visible which I believe is mouse mode visible. And one more thing specifically for my controller is that we need to set the interaction raycast dot enabled to false. And the reason for that, and we don't have a reference to it, I could have sworn we had a reference to it. That's fine. If we go into our head and find our interaction raycast, actually it might be named differently. Let's make sure. No, I don't see it. And that's quite all right. We're just gonna go ahead and grab that and set that there. And the reason for this is if the player uh, is looking at a door and then they open the inventory, we don't want the player to be able to work uh, or be able to open the door or grab the box or whatever it may be. So that's if the inventory is being pressed. What happens if the inventory is not pressed or we have just let go of it? So we're going to go ahead and take all of our mouse input for the camera and just put it in the else block of the inventory. And the reason for that is we're simply locking the camera. Essentially, if the inventory is open, we're not taking any mouse movement for the camera. All the mouse movement is directed for the UI of the inventory. So that's all there. Uh, we need to do a few things. Obviously, because we were setting these to true and false, we need to reset them back. So the inventory controller is false if we're not pressing the inventory button. We also need to re-enable our interaction raycast. And we need to do one more thing. We need to check if the interaction controller dot current object. And if we have a current object, I will explain this in a minute, we need to set our mouse mode back to captured. Sorry, we need to say if not, if we do not have a current object, then we set it back to captured. And I'll explain what this does in just a second. First, I'm realizing I made a mistake with my inventory controller. You'll see that our inventory controller here is just a node. We are actually interested in the inventory UI. So we're gonna have to go down and find it. And I think the simplest way is just to do a backslash or forward slash, sorry, canvas layer forward slash inventory UI. So at this point, our inventory should work. If we go ahead and start our game, we're gonna look around. I'm gonna press the tab button. You can now see that I have a mouse that can click and move around, but the camera is frozen. I should be able to unclick, look around. I no longer have a mouse. And so now we have the startings, the makings of an inventory. I'm realizing it probably makes more sense. So I've just removed that line. So now you can see here, the logic works similarly. If I hit tab, works fine. But if I let go, you'll now see that the mouse is still visible. So this is essentially a special fix for this kind of case. So we're gonna go ahead and hit escape, hit control Z, and there we go. So we now have the startings of an inventory slot. In the next episode, we are going to be adding actual inventory slots that we can manipulate, and we are going to start coding for real.